Okay, here's another problem having to do with circular motion and the forces acting on someone. Here we have a plane that flies in a vertical inside loop of radius 3.00 times 10 to the third meters. At the very top of the loop, the speed of the plane is 211 meters per second. What is the normal force exerted by the plane on the pilot whose mass is 48.0 kilograms? We can figure this out. At the bottom of the loop, the plane speed has doubled. What is the normal force exerted on the pilot at this point? And it is this normal force that you will perceive as weight, actually. When you're sitting in a chair, you feel a contact force between yourself and the chair. That's what you perceive as your weight. Albert Einstein got to thinking about this one day, and he said he had the happiest thought of his life. He realized at that point, he said, that if I were in free fall, I wouldn't feel my weight on the chair. And starting with this simple idea, by the way, you could experience this if someone lifted you and your chair up, took you to the top of a tall building, and tossed you over the edge. On the way down, you wouldn't feel your weight on the chair. And that was the idea that Einstein had. He took this idea and ran with it and developed his general theory of relativity. So, first thing I like to do on problems like this is have a sketch. And so, I've drawn a circle. And this can represent the circle that the plane flies in. And at the top of the circle, the plane will be upside down. And between the pilot's weight and the normal force that the chair exerts on them, they should be feeling an acceleration toward the center of the circle, which is going to be right there. This is not the scale. It's supposed to be a 3,000 meter or a 3 kilometer radius on this thing, so it's not quite realistic, but uh, size-wise. At the bottom, uh, between, well, actually the pilot's weight will be downward, but the normal force will be upward they have to experience an acceleration toward the center of this thing at the bottom as well. And so we can calculate what those forces are going to be. Okay, well let's start off with uh, dealing with the situation at the top. And I think I'm going to divide this into two parts, so I'll just do the, the uh, top part and then the bottom of the circle. So just do it that way. Okay, so at the top, if I make a free body diagram for the forces acting on the pilot, there will be mg acting downward, but there will also be the normal force acting downward on the pilot. Unless the plane is going so slow that the straps that strap them into their seat has to hold them up. But we'll find out that it uh, does have to be the normal force. The mg by itself cannot give the plane the acceleration there. Okay, well, with both my forces pointing down, I'm going to let down be the positive direction. So I indicate that with a little plus sign and a down arrow. So down is positive. And on all these problems, I start off with the sum of the forces equals ma. By the way, at the top of the circle, the acceleration is going to be pointing downward. I had to draw two different arrows here because uh, got two forces acting at the same point in the same direction. Okay, uh, sum of the forces equals MA with positive being downward. I can immediately switch to a scalar equation because both forces and the acceleration are in the same direction. So I can just say that mg plus n is equal to ma. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to calculate the weight of the pilot here. And uh, it'll be the same in both situations. But mg is just, just going to be 48.0 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And the pilot's weight is 
471 newtons. So that's handy to know. Now when we look at these normal forces we'll be able to do that. Well let's see, they're traveling in a circle so I know what the acceleration is going to look like. It's going to be V squared over R. So the normal force in this case will be MA minus MG and what we'll have is, let's see, I already know that one is 471 newtons minus their mass, 48.0 kilograms, times V squared over R. Well, at the top they're going 211 meters per second. And I have to square that divided by the 3.00 times 10 to the third meters. So, okay, so I slopped over a little bit room-wise, but this will work out okay. Anyway, plugging in all the numbers. Just noticed I have these two things backwards here. <laughs> I've got, this is MG and this is MA. I was wondering why I got a negative result on this and I shouldn't have. What I get is 241 newtons for the normal force. Okay, the mg, the 471 newtons, isn't enough to provide that acceleration that's needed and the normal force uh, between a 241 newton normal force and the 471 newton weight of the pilot that will make the pilot travel in that circular path of 3,000 meters. All right, let's go to the bottom. Okay, at the bottom, the plane will be upright like that. The acceleration is upward. There's a downward force on the pilot of mg. That upward force of the plane seat has to overcome the weight and produce the center-seeking acceleration. And so here we'll have uh, the normal force is acting upward, mg is acting downward, and I like to put off to the side just a little arrow indicating the direction of the acceleration. It's upward. So for this part I'm going to let positive be upward, and Newton's second law in vector form here will be n plus mg is equal to ma in scalar form since this is all in one same direction if it's positive it's up if it's negative or if it's down it's negative so n minus mg is going to equal ma so the normal force in this case is equal to ma plus mg and we'll find out. It does say they're going twice as fast at the bottom. The speed has doubled. So I'll have 48.0 kilograms times V squared. That'll be 422 meters per second squared divided by the three. 0 0.00 times 10 to the third meters plus the weight of the pilot which is 471 newtons and the normal force ends up being 2.85 times 10 to the third newtons plus the 471 newtons 3.32 times 10 to the third newtons And that's the upward normal force that the pilot will be experiencing. That happens to be seven times the pilot's weight. And so the upward normal force from the chair is seven times as great as the pilot's weight. That means they're going to be experiencing seven G's of acceleration. Um, the normal force upward from the chair will be seven times as great. 
if you want to support your arm, however much one of your arm weighs, you're going to have to exert seven times as much force. If your neck happens to be bent, uh, you'll have to exert seven times as much force to straighten your neck. Everything. And at seven G's, some people will pass out. Some people will pass out beyond five G's if they're exposed to that for very long. So, quite an interesting problem here anyway.